In the next part of this lecture, we are going to explore the history of IO psychology. More specifically, how the Gilbreth's time and motion studies contributed to its development. Here is a timeline of some of the most important events in IO psychology's history. In the 1890s, James Cattell developed the first mental tests and began measuring individual differences. In 1913, Hugo Munsterberg published the field's first textbook, Psychology and Industrial Efficiency, in 1913. In 1917, Yerkes, Scott, and Bingham developed the Army Alpha and Beta tests. Lillian Gilbreth was awarded the first PhD in IO psychology. In the 1930s, the Hawthorne studies examined the impact of illumination on productivity, but instead birthed organizational psychology. After World War II, the Alpha and Beta tests became the ASVAB, the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, which was adapted by all branches of the military by 1976. In the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, selection tests and performance appraisal became the hot topics of the field, and there were plenty of tests and measures being created at that time. Plus, the passing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 led to an increased concern about individual differences and equality and fairness in the workplace. I want to focus on the time and motion studies of Lillian and Frank Gilbreth. In the image here, you see the two. They were a married couple. They had 12 children. Their goal was to improve productivity and decrease fatigue. They were trying to help not only individual people save time and energy, but also help companies make more money at the end of the day. Their approach involved three basic steps. First, break down every action into its parts. Now, some actions are already as simple as they can be, but the Gilbreths were interested in the micro parts, the muscles that were being used, the hand movements, the physical body turns and adjustments that had to be made. They used photography to take pictures of people doing their jobs and then used the photographs to analyze motion. They analyzed time by using a stopwatch to record the length of time it took people to do any one task. They used all of this information to then try to develop more efficient actions, actions that saved time, energy, and reduced the amount of stress on the body. To see the photographs from the Gilbreth's studies, check out the YouTube clip I have on Blackboard. Their studies transformed the way that people thought about work and about the role of science in the workplace. One of the ways that Lillian contributed to not only psychology, but also to our everyday lives is in how she applied the data from their time and motion studies. On the slide, I have three examples of products that were created that were engineered by Lillian Gilbreth. The shelves in your refrigerator, step trash cans, and the traditional configuration of a kitchen. Most kitchens today are designed to minimize the number of steps that you have to take from one appliance to another. You have Lillian Gilbreth to thank for that. Side note, one of the Gilbreth's children wrote the book Cheaper by the Dozen. From that book, several different versions of the movie have been made. The storyline of the book and of the movies is based on the real lives of Frank, Lillian, and their 12 children. In many ways, the time and motion studies set the stage for IO psychology to develop. In the late 1920s and early 1930s, another set of studies called the Hawthorne Studies were conducted at 
a manufacturing company in Northern Illinois. Initially, the two researchers were hired to investigate how lighting, how illumination impacted performance, in this case defined as productivity. Although they predicted that lighting would have an effect, what they found was that it didn't matter what kind of lighting was used. When the researchers studied employees in this company, they tended to perform better. Today, we sometimes call it the Hawthorne effect. This effect is the tendency to improve our behavior when we know we're being observed by others. If those observers were not present, we would not be performing at that level. Essentially, it was employees' job attitudes, the way they perceived their work, that really had an impact on performance, a direct impact on performance. The Hawthorne studies were transformational in that they marked the beginning of organizational psychology. Up until that point, employees and workers were thought of as machines, not really as humans. So we call this the human relations movement, a period in the 20s, 30s, and 40s where employers began to look at their workers as human beings who have feelings and thoughts and attitudes, all of which have an impact on their behavior at work. If you have time, I highly recommend watching the second video I have posted on Blackboard from YouTube. It provides background information and really gives you a good idea of what the world was like at the time the Hawthorne studies were being conducted. There is another set of events that I want to mention in this part of the lecture. Both World War I and World War II, and the military in general, had an enormous impact on how IO psychology developed. More specifically, World War I defined IO psychology. In 1917, a group of IO psychologists, Yerkes, Scott, and Bingham, developed the Army Alpha and Beta Tests. In 1968, those two tests became the first ASVAB, and then World War II refined the field. The equipment that the military used in World War II was very different from the equipment it had used in World War I. Things were more complex, there were more soldiers, more recruits, more people, more decisions to be made, communication had been improved. There were all kinds of things that made the job even more challenging than it, than it had been years earlier. Human factors psychologists were brought in to help design the equipment. Everything from the airplanes to the vehicles driven on the ground to the way that recruits were selected and trained. After World War II, the field really took off in terms of popularizing its selection and performance tests and in terms of how human factors had helped the military and other organizations address some of their efficiency and effectiveness concerns. To summarize, there are three sets of events that played an important role in defining IO psychology and popularizing it among aspiring psychologists. The Gilbreths time and motion studies, the Hawthorne studies, and both World War I and World War II.